Well, let's speak to Dennis Nash about this. He's distinguished professor of epidemiology at the City University of New York and is joining us uh, via Zoom from New York. Professor Nash, thank you very much for being with us. This has been described as cutting edge treatment. Is it treatment that has potential? Um, I think it's uh, no, not at this time. This is, uh, as you mentioned, and we have to remember this is uh, a treatment that took place in someone who had both HIV and leukemia, um, and it involves some very um, complex procedures as well as dangerous procedures mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, someone who didn't need to be treated for a life-threatening condition like leukemia would not want to undergo. Um, the average person living with HIV would not want to take on these, these risks. And moreover, um, the, the procedures are difficult to implement safely in many parts of the world that, that bear the greatest burden of HIV, uh, right. specifically in resource-limited settings. Right. But when they say the woman was cured, what does it mean? Is it, is it, the same as being undetectable or HIV being undetectable in your system, or is this something different? Yeah, this is something different. Um, this means that um, the virus was basically vanquished from the, the person, um, from the person's blood, from the person's cells. Mm -hmm. um, this happened because the treatment for leukemia first, um, you know, really destroys all of her blood cells. Mm -hmm. And then um, she received stem cell transplants on top of that. Um, so um, it's it's very it's unheard of. It's right. extremely um, unheard of for people with HIV for this to happen for people with HIV. The virus always comes back e even after it is undetectable if you stop treatment, and it did not happen in, in these three cases that we've had to date. So if I understand you correctly, this can only be applied to people who have leukemia, right? What would be what would attempting a stem cell transplant in anyone who doesn't have a serious uh, condition? Uh, pose. I mean, what what will be the risks involved? Yeah, it carries with it um, a, a high risk of of a bad outcome, including death. Mm. And so, um, meanwhile, people, the average person with HIV, can um, live a healthy life with normal life expectancy on life saving treatments that we're lucky to have. We've had some major advances in the field of treatment and prevention. Um, and, and so um, with these same treatments, we can prevent transmission as well as treat it. We can prevent transmission from mother to child, um, from sex and needle sharing partners to one another. Right. Um, and so this is what we need to be focused on now for the 80 percent of, of uh, for the 38 million people who are living with HIV around the world. Yeah, today. I was going to ask you what information this particular research gives on what direction HIV research should be taking to try and get an elusive uh, cure. Yeah, I mean, I think a cure, uh, to be sure, this is very important development, very, very welcome news and, and progress, right? A cure for HIV has been highly sought after since it was recognized um, as a life-threatening viral infection of pandemic proportions nearly 40 years ago, but mm. it's really been elusive to date to some of the field's greatest minds. Why is that? Why is HIV so difficult to cure? Well, it's a very wily virus. Many viruses are, um, and it's um, it, it can hide in, in places in the body um, that that make it very hard for treatments that can kill the virus to, to reach. And so, um, even though it may become undetectable in blood tests, it doesn't mean that it's not there. And when you remove the treatments, um, the virus begins to replicate again. Um, and we've never find, found a way, except in these three patients, um, to really vanquish it. Professor Dennis Nash, thank you very much for talking to us about this. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.